Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Brian from Smart Tech Automations and I'm back with a new video. Today we are going to have two lessons. In lesson one, we shall learn how to do hardware configuration in Step 7 Semantic Manager for S7300 PLC. In lesson two, we shall make a simple ladder logic and learn how we can simulate it with Step 7 Semantic Manager. Let's start by going through an overview of Siemens S7300 PLC. It is a medium level PLC which is compact and also modular. Its CPU versions run from 3.12 to 3.18 and it can support up to 1024 digital inputs and outputs and up to 256 analog inputs and outputs. The software used to program it is Step 7 Semantic Manager. We shall now open our Semantic Manager And uh, here on file, you click on file, then click on new. Uh, then you create the name for your project. Let's call it tutorial, tutorial one. Okay. Uh, there is a table which uh, will be created and right click on tutorial one then say insert new object and click on semantic 300 station uh, there is a plus uh, which will appear here just next to tutorial one click on that to expand then there uh, expand on semantic 300 Then click on hardware. And it will bring you to this page. Uh, the first thing you'll do is to, uh, to click here on Semantic 300. Then you insert a rack. So uh, expand on rack 300. Then you, you click on rail and this table right here will appear. Uh, let's assume you want to have a hardware configuration like this whereby you want to have a power supply, a CPU, an interface module, a digital input module, a digital output module, an analog input module, an analog output. Uh, let's say you also want to have a, a, a functional module and, and a communication module. So you'll, uh, uh, you'll come here to PS300, that is for power supply. From these options, you can choose the exact uh, power supply module that you have. So for me, I'll just click on the first one and once you click on it you see that on this table it's highlighted green and also this one that means that for the power supply module it has to be on slot number one and it can't be on slot number two <coughs> or any other slot so you'll double click on it and drag it up to up to slot number one so we have our power supply in place now uh, the second is the CPU. For the CPU, you'll expand on CPU 300. Uh, these are the various CPUs that you can have. Uh, you expand on the one which you have. I'll, I'll simply expand on this one and then I'll choose this one. Then I'll drag it and drop it on slot number two. On slot number three, we have the interface module. For the interface module, uh, I can just minimize that for now. For the interface module, I'll expand on this IM300. I click on that plus. Then I can choose the interface module which I have. And so I'll just uh, I'll just choose the say the second one.
and then I drop it there. So on this table you see you can add up to 11 modules. Now uh, our fourth module will be a digital input module. So I'll come back again here. And, and click on SM for signal module, SM300. Then I choose DI300, that is for digital input. And then from this list, you can choose the module that you actually have. So for me, I'll just take the, uh, I'll click on this one. Then I drag it to the fourth slot. And then for the fifth slot, we have digital output. So digital output, that will be DO300. I expand on that one and choose from any of these. So I'll just click at random and place it on slot number five. Uh, then the other module that we have is uh, analog input module so I'll come to again to uh, that will be AI AI 300 and I'll click on it and I'll choose uh, for me I'll choose any but uh, when you're doing this with your project you can choose the one that you have I'll click on it and drag it to slot number six uh, then there is uh, then there is the uh, analog output. For analog output, that uh, that will be AO, AO300. Then you choose the module that you have. You drag it and you drop it. Uh, then we, we have a function module. For the function module, you'll click on FM300, then you, uh, there are control mo controller modules, flow sensor modules, weighing modules, cam controllers, and so on. You click depending in the, with the type of controller that you have. So if you want a controller module, then you can click on it. Then you choose from, uh, from these ones here. Let's say I click on this I'll drag it and I'll drop it to slot number eight uh, we also have the communication module CP I'll come to CP 300 I click on it uh, let's click on profibus and then we drag and drop it right there here you say okay from there there is this button here save and compile you click on it and that is simply how you do your hardware configurations on step 7 semantic manager now we are going to learn how to simulate a, a ladder logic with step 7 semantic manager and again we open semantic manager We click on file, then click on open. We are going to open the project that we saved. Then click on tutorial one. Okay. Then you'll expand you'll expand on tutorial, expand on Cimatic 300, expand on CPU. Uh then expand on S7 program and here on blocks you click it uh, then click on OB1 on this dialog box this is where you set the programming language that you want to use so we shall go with ladder and so you click OK and this window will open so this is where you you create your program uh, 
So we can first start by creating a very a very simple ladder logic. Uh, we put a normally open contact there and we put a coil. Uh, for the input, we give it address i 0 uh, dot 1. And for the output, we can give it Q four dot zero. Then you click enter. We have our ladder diagram here, and we want to simulate it and see if we switch on this normally open contact, whether the coil will get energized. We shall go back to this page and switch on uh, the simulator and that is your simulator uh, I can just close this one I'll show you how how to open them and then go back to your to your program and download it if you get this error it means that there is no communication between your program and your simulator. So again, you'll go to, to this page, click on options, uh, click on set PG stroke PC interface. Then this dialog box will appear. Click on PLC sim.mpi then say ok and then you go back to your program download it you can see we have not experienced any error this time uh, then you can switch on your simulator and on these icons here, you can click this one for insert input variables and insert output variable. Uh, here, you have to switch on your PLC. So you click on run. Then our input here is IO.1 then click on one here on this input box uh, but you can see on this output nothing has happened it's because we are on block zero but our our output is on block four so you have to change this zero and put a four now if i click on one you can see that our our zero also comes on. Another thing you can do on your program, you can come here and click on this icon and you can see that it says running. You can now even switch on your simulator. When I put off one, you can see And if I put it on again, you can see how it behaves. And that's how you do the simulation with Simatic Step 7. And I hope this video has helped you. And kindly don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos.